salutations, peace, blessings, what's up? They were bringing up a situation about Malcolm X and his troubles and they who are not, we who are not. And I made a reply and they asked me to give my perception of this Malcolm X and I said he was a good soul. But he made a mistake. So it's almost like a child being beaten at home, he says, when it's not really happening. He goes next door to the neighbor and he beseeches his neighbor to give him help. And the neighbor approaches the parents and forces them to allow the child to spend a night, maybe two, and then sending them home. And once he gets home, he gets beat for real. You know what I'm saying? When people go in front of other people, they speak on terms of being a spokesperson, but they fail to realize they are great teachers, terrible students. And when they went into Harlem's inner city and ghetto and they, they interviewed dope fiends and heroin users and things of that nature and they were just basically in left field saying that they weren't even a portion of the conscious multitudes that would even listen to this man. They had no idea, no want, no reverence, no warrant to even be a student or be inclined to even acknowledge a lot or acknowledge other things. You know what I'm saying? So of course, in front of the camera, oh, we doing good, we doing good, baby, ain't, ain't nobody bothering us. And they feel as though those on the line, the economic line, they shall not be uh, bothered by the technology or maybe uh, the politics of this world, you know, and Nostradamus even spoke about it those below the line. At the same time, above the line, on the front line, was this Malcolm X speaking about politics as if he was a spokesperson for the whole. When in all actuality, he wasn't a spokesperson at all. He was a small light that came from a larger light that decided for himself what a lot of people decide today, even on this network, to be self-proclaimed, high-mask, scholars, and things of that nature without going through the rigor more and the test of the ancients. Malcolm X made a terrible decision and that's about the size of it. And it's okay to outgrow your position at your home. And at 18 years old, you move out and you get your own place. But it's not good to just feel that you are the one chosen to bring forth a message for the whole and you have humble beginnings. You come from a place that designed and fashioned and shaped your, your being. And you was a street nigga. You know what I'm saying? And that's a part of your experience. Matter but not matter. Does it not matter? That a part of you was divine, but it was a part of you that was undivine. And you were in them into. You get to a point in life where you're tired of bumping your head and going back and forth to jail and running from gunshots and all this other stuff, and then you reform yourself only to put yourself in harm's way. It's just a part of your experience. It's always going to rear its ugly head. 
and always say it, things do not leave you only to come back around. Things dissipate right in front of your eyes and still staring at you. And then from time to time, it reappears. It rears its ugly head. Always with you. And this man got hurt. Simply because he didn't understand protocol. And protocol was no cameras. You know what I'm saying? In terms, he's a good messenger. But there are other good messengers. In terms his feelings and his thought process and his person, personal feelings should have never been shown in terms of his perception of what life is, knowing at that age he had room to grow. So if you dealing with evolution, you have to approach it as if you are dealing with evolution and aggression and not approach it like you've made it. You understand what I'm saying? Because it scales to written or talkal, spoken literature, guidance, knowledge, and wisdom, which is merely experience. In terms he went next door and claimed he was being beat, him and his friends and brothers. They come over here, and the first thing they find out is not everybody is getting whooped. Only those who are not approaching it correctly in terms of approaching the politics of this world, say you're born into the world to learn the politics. You're not born into the world to dictate, you are the master of the law, even legislative laws. All you have to do is stick your nose in a book and master it and stay above it. Which leads me to other things. This Martin Luther King of South Africa, this Nelson Mandela that did it wrong, and the Nelson Mandela of America, which is Martin Luther King, he did it wrong. Marcus Garvey didn't know who he was. He read an insert in, in the Bible, tens of thousands of soldiers and an influx. Hey, everybody, let's leave and come back with the influx. And publicity and dealing with the public, you can't dibble and dabble into things of this nature. And enlightenment is just mere enlightenment. Knowing that USA is decon, which means you come in but you ain't never leaving. And it's just a misconception and the fleece, this transatlantic slave trade. Everybody knows you come here, you're gonna get buried on top of your forefather that came from there and your forefather that was born here many years ago. This is decon. Nobody leaves. If a nigga is leaving on a slave ship, He's going to be the nigger given a job to catch another slave when he gets to the mainland. Niggers don't go nowhere and get traded nowhere. Niggers come here, but they don't leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the whole thing with Nelson Mandela is he was like a, I don't know, special education class student that couldn't understand the curriculum. And he made a fit in class and told everybody, listen, only reason I'm stopping the teacher from talking is because I don't understand the curriculum. And I think this rule or this type of situation should occur. And they threw his ass in jail for 27 years. Martin Luther King blocked the streets. He challenged one of the four heads of the Western Hemisphere. Automobile industry, giant. You stop people from going to work on time. You stop people from going uh, about their daily lives in pursuit of happiness, which is granted us the First Amendment, 
only to get your point across about some things that were here before you even were born, like segregation in a free state in Alabama, not knowing what happened, say someone being drugged with a tow chain around his neck, leading to a police officer being shot in the head in a police precinct around World War II, which created segregation in Alabama. Crimson Tide, that is just not the nickname of a university called Alabama. That is the blood that was shared during this time around World War II and prior years between the whites and the blacks leading to segregation. These families moved to Toledo, Ohio, Detroit, Michigan, Fort Wayne, Indiana, St. Paul, Minnesota, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Chicago, Illinois, Cleveland, Ohio, moved to Brooklyn, New York, Blueberry Hill, Connecticut, you understand, Oakland, California, and then, you know, Martin marched right through Selma. The situation happened really close to Selma, about 30 to 42 miles uh, south of Selma. He marched straight through central Alabama, just trying to catch a whiff of that yesterday. Then he came up and marched down Collingwood Springs in Toledo, Ohio. Lord knows he may have walked, or marched down a in, in, uh, main road in Michigan. All Martin Luther King was doing was chasing this particular family that moved to Toledo, Ohio, moved to Detroit, Michigan, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and he was chasing something that came before his time because he wasn't born around World War II, I don't believe. And he may have been, but he's just a child, and he was a fourth generation, probably fifth generation socialist. So now he finds himself under an umbrella of politics. You know what I'm saying? So he finds himself under an umbrella of politics. It's raining. Too many politicians under that umbrella. They give him a newspaper so he won't get soaked and say, listen, we're on Fifth Avenue. And the socialist umbrella is two blocks down. And there's not enough room under this umbrella. So he puts a paper, newspaper on his head after he thought he had friends in politics. He was never born a politician. He's running down the street, and he gets struck with an arc of electricity and lightning. Voila. Shakes a man hand in politics. Hey, I'm on with King. Man, a white man turned his nose up. And he has to tell him something. Martin, if this was a third world country, we would have went into Alabama. We would have went into Alabama with a death squad. We would have killed blacks and whites. But this is not. The War Council at that time was watching would be World War II, which stemmed from the wars of 1845 and the wars of, over the Ark of the Covenant. And the whole world is watching Germany, Russia, Japan, United Kingdom. They're watching the Ottomans. They're watching what King Leonardo was doing over there in the Congo amongst the Congolese and his constituency that allowed him to go to Congo. Everybody is just watching the post air of all these things. And we get a call, War Council get a call, you know, it's up evil in the state of Alabama. Blacks are killing whites, whites are killing blacks, which is, you know, something that could never be told in a history book, but it's very true. And then Martin Luther King just steps out on faith dealing with a woman that is would be because uh, I met Rosa Parks 